السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن لا All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a slave and found a messenger Salatu rabbihi wa salamu alayhi Welcome back my dear viewers to another new, se- new episode in our series that we are continuing of qualities to be a successful Muslims. Muslim with us in the studio uh, in Cairo, Egypt, is our esteemed guest uh, and speaker, uh, Ustad Omar. Welcome, Brother Omar, once again. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fiyo. Always good to have you. Anna. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Amen. Alhamdulillah, this is our fifth episode uh, in this series of qualities of being a better Muslim, and actually a part two of our last series, which we started uh, last time, of how to be a visionary uh, or how to be a visionary Muslim. Uh, in this world, in this uh, pathway, in this uh, travel, in this uh, journey of ours in this world. Uh, we spoke last time about the characteristics of uh, uh, ha- what, what it takes to be a visionary Muslim. And today, uh, Brother Omar, uh, I would like us to speak about maybe how to implement these tools that we have in our hands now to actually become visionaries. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. A very good question. So a person, a Muslim, should uh, list his most important uh, responsibilities that he will be asked about on the day of judgment. He should list them, and then for each responsibility, he should make aims specific for them. And then a plan, okay? So that's the step, three steps. List his main responsibilities. Number two, make aims for each one. And number three, make a plan to to implement uh, the the ideas that you have to uh, make sure that the aim becomes a reality. So let's... um, Break it down. Let's break it down and let's do an actual example. So I would say that the four most important responsibility for every Muslim is number one, his ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. His worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the purpose of creation. That's the purpose. That's the most important one. No. Number two, his family. He will be asked about his spouse, his children, uh, his parents, no. and so on. Number three as well, his uh, main career or position in society. Mm. So what he is going to you know, study for a long time, specialize in, what profession he's going to be involved in, or business and so on, that's another important responsibility because uh, as, as men in particular, we are financially responsible for our families and also we will be asked about our money, mm. in the hadith it mentions, where it came from and what we spent it on. Mm. And then the last one I would say is uh, our da'wah, you mm. know, our... Uh, and when I say da'wah, I mean our positive influence over people around us. Mm. It could be our community, it could be non-Muslims, it could be our neighbours and so on. So these four are the main respons- uh, responsibilities for us. So that's step one, tick. Mm. Step two now, for each one, I need to make an aim for it. Short-term goal. Or exactly. Plan. An aim. So for ibadah, what is my aim behind ibadah? My aim is to earn the pleasure of Allah. Mm. My aim is to be a close abid, close servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want the best type of ibadah, right? Mm. So that becomes my aim. Now becomes my plan. In order for Allah to be pleased with me, in order for me to try to enter paradise through ibadah, I need a plan. So my plan is, number one, to pray my five salawat on time. Another idea is to read Quran every day. Mm. Another idea or plan is to do my adhkar every day. Mm. 
Another plan could be to pray Qiyam al-Layl once in a while. Another idea is to fast from time to time. Another idea is uh, once a week I have this secret good deed that no one knows about, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about, oh. that I do regularly, that I can, you know, uh, I can be proud of on the Day of Judgment, something between me and Allah and gives me a secret close relationship with Allah in this dunya. It could be that once a week or so I go to this Muslim graveyard mm. and I go visit uh, you know, the dead Muslims and I just use this time to reflect and to think of how I can improve myself, how I can do more good deeds, how I need to change certain bad habits. Mm. Because the Prophet encouraged us to visit the graves because it reminds us of death and our meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, speaking about secret uh, acts, uh, mm. tell us the story, if you don't mind, of uh, that, that came to my mind, the story of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Amir mm. al-Mu'mineen at the time, mm. where he would go into the house of the old woman and he would do what he do and she, she didn't know who he was. Yeah, subhanahu so you'll find the Sahaba and the Salaf, they all had like a secret deed, you know. Some yeah. of them, they will fast uh, regularly and their own uh, wives wouldn't know. Mm. So every morning, you know, they would uh, take the food and pretend that they're going to take it, pack lunch, you know, mm. and they will eat it when they leave the house. And they will give it as sadaqah to someone uh, and they will keep their fast. Other people, they would, um, you know, uh, like Abu Bakr Siddiq, he would help uh, a, 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 a woman, he would give sadaqah, all these things no one knew, knew about. So th these things are important because yeah. the Salaf, they said that we used to rely on our secret deeds, mm. not our public deeds, because we don't know if it's accepted or not. So that's, you know, ibadah aims. Mm. We get a picture of how I can improve my ibadah for every year, uh, f from my salawat, my siyam, all of these actions. What do I need to increase in? You know, if I'm not praying on time, I need to start praying on time. If I'm not praying my sunan prayers, I need to start doing that. No. If I'm not praying my duha, if I'm not reading Quran, all these things I need to khalas, include it in my schedule now, my itinerary, because mm. I want ibadah to be the best. Yeah. Moving on, family. So hold on, let's uh, take it one step back. We said goal setting, we have to set what, what our goals are in life, which mm -hmm. we mentioned, what our goals are. Then we have to make specific plans or goals or aims that mm -hmm. to reach our goals, right? Yes. What's the third step in, in the three? It the, the, the th so the, the, the first is identifying your responsibility, secondly making aims for each responsibility, thirdly making plans and implementing that plan. Okay. Okay, so, so, so we did the four responsibilities, okay, there could be more, it depends on the individual, but these are the main four. No. And then for each one, we're going to make an aim. Mm. So family, my aim behind uh, family is I want to have a close relationship with my family, that can be an aim. Yeah. Number two, I want to uh, Establish save. Establish this deen, for example. Yes, I want, I want my children, my wife, to also be close to Allah. Because mm. Allah says, save yourselves and your family from the punishment. No. Okay, so all of these are aims. They're not going to happen until you have uh, you know, a plan to execute. Mm. Okay. So you want your family with you in Jannah. You want to guide your family, you got work to do. Yes. So my plan could be that every single day, half an hour a day, I will have a one-to-one -one with, you know, my, my wife. Mm. Yeah, and this one-to-one -one could is, is, is uh, you know, we remember Allah, or we read a book together, or we watch a lecture together, something that will increase our iman. No. Okay? This is our thing that we do every day. Okay. Mm. Um, Every single day, I will call my mother, even if it's just 15 minutes, 20 minutes, because bir, having, you know, being pious and obedient and good to your parents is from the best good deeds. Mm. Okay, so doing ihsan, kindness and goodness to my parents. Uh, I have relatives who are poor, helping them out. I have a grandmother, I have uncles, tying the, the kin, um, inviting my relatives regularly. I'm the person who brings the peace in, fa in the family. I'm the person who brings the family together, keeps the love. You know, whenever we have a gathering, I make sure that, you know, what we talk about is good. There's no backbiting. There's no, you know, haram happening, yeah. you know. You as a person who Allah guided, become the person who, who guides others. Yeah. And even if you don't have Muslims in your family, or you have non-practicing people in your family, you are the person who, who makes them love Islam, mm. who brings them closer to Islam. Not the other way around, unfortunately, sometimes it's the religious guy, unfortunately, in the family 
who that's distancing himself. Distan he's distant. He might be harsh sometimes, uh, especially with his family. You know, you guys, where's your beard, brother? Where? Why are you not praying on time? And that harshness makes them maybe uh, not like this religion. Turns instead of them off. Yeah. builds and, and a barrier. In the Quran, it, we we say, "Oh Allah, do not make us a fitna no. for those who do not believe. Do not make us a fitna for for for, uh, for others." And we can do that when we put off people through mm. our manners and char character. So that's that's number two, family. No, and khair for mentioning that part about kinship because Subhanallah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think kinship is one of the, uh, if it's broken, of course, it's one of the uh, the uh, of the few ibadat that if we are not in in touch with and we're not connected with that, the punishment will actually be uh, rushed to us in this dunya immediately, and then in the hereafter will be another account. Absolutely, absolutely. The person who cuts the ties, he wouldn't smell the fragrance of, of paradise. This is an important thing that unfortunately uh, we're, we're heedless. And to, to add to that as well is your responsibility with your family. Yeah. You know, are you a good parent? Are you spending on your, on, on your wife, on, on your family and stuff? So this, you all need to plan for that. You know, yeah. what am I doing? Uh, to, to or what can I do to make sure I'm fulfilling my right, uh, the rights of my family, right? So that's number two. Number three, your career. So you want to be kind of uh, you know the most successful person. Why not have good aims? And you know this is not a worldly dunya we aim, because the Prophet ﷺ said the person on the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The pr the strong mu'min is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a weak Muslim. Yes. So when you have a strong position in society... And I'm sorry to cut yeah. you off, but even before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to establish ourselves in the earth. Absolutely, yes. of course, of course. So this is part of our, our, our deen. No. And, you know, we want to uh, benefit others. The Prophet said, the so best of you are those who are the most beneficial to others. So I need to, therefore, study hard. I need to gain uh, good skills. I need to gain a good trade, good profession. So all of this, again, needs planning. Studying and, and looking for good opportunities, um, and, and this is important for, for your deen and for your akhirah. And then the last one we mentioned is what your community, your ummah. Uh, what are you doing to, to have a benefit to people around you? Okay, you can be volunteering once a week in your masjid, you can have a small project that you set up in a side that benefits other people, no. uh, you can be helping orphans, you can be helping youth, you can be teaching you know, voluntary once a week, a few hours a week. So giving back to the community, giving back to the ummah. That also needs aims. Firstly, why are you doing this? Secondly, what can you do to make sure that, uh, you know, you can achieve the best that you can when it comes to that part? Yeah. Um, so, th so this is, um, you know, a, a, a small example of how we can practically implement uh, th the idea of being visionary and being productive. Jazakumullah khair, Ustaz Omar. Inshallah, we're going to take a short break and, and get back to uh, practical tips of why, for example, we uh, that might delay us of, from mm. being productive. Uh, dear viewers, there we have it. Uh, uh, Ustaz Omar just shared with us practical ways on how to implement uh, the characteristics and the tools that we acquired and that we learned from our previous episode in order to become visionaries, in order to benefit ourselves, our communities, and the ummah at large. As uh, our, uh, you know, our brother demonstrated, there is no clash, there is no uh, contradicting in having the best of both worlds, being Muslim who is practicing, who is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as having the world uh, side by side, uh, there is no uh, clash in that. Inshallah, let's take a small break and we'll be back and continuing to see the uh, pros and maybe the, the what, c what obstacles uh, we could face while becoming visionary Muslims so we can better ourselves after a short break. Jazakallah khair. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa qalban khasha Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa qalban khasha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, uh, respected audience. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we've learned the characteristics and the tools in order to be visionaries. And we've also learned uh, how to implement these tools and these characteristics in ourselves and in our daily lives and our short term and long term goals. Um, Sheikh Omar, uh, continuing this journey, uh, 
what obstacles might someone uh, might someone face in this path of uh, applying these characteristics in order to be a successful Muslim? I mean, uh, and we mentioned these, so we are aware of them. So w if we do stumble upon them, we know how to fix them and how to remedy them. And uh, obviously, we want to avoid them altogether. But mm. uh, inshallah, as we learn them, we can avoid them. And if we don't avoid them, we learn how to go over them, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest barriers towards success, one of the biggest um, actually destroyers of success is sins, mm. sinning. And once someone sins, he is removing the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what he has. You know, he's removing the blessings that he has in his family, mm. the blessings in your tijara, blessings in your time, the blessings even in doing good deeds. Because sins, it has an effect and it has consequences. It removes the blessings in your life. And this is what the Sahaba and the Salaf, they used to say that whenever something goes wrong, you know, between the husband and the wife or the camel or the horse or the tijara, they used to link it back to a sin. And we're re referring here camel or horse for as like a rider. transport, yeah, the transport. transport. So when your car is not working, yes. you know, your wife's not ob obeying you anymore, your children don't love you anymore, mm. it means you need to repent. Mm. It means you check need yourself. to check yourself and leave some of the sins that you're doing. Mm. And likewise, when, when you feel like you're not being productive, you know, days are passing, weeks are passing, and you're not able to do much, you're not... You, you know, your time, you don't feel like in, the, in your time is, is blessed. Mm. And someone else, he's finishing everything uh, within a day, you know, and he's doing so much in so little time. And this is one of the definitions of blessings. Blessing is when Allah Azza wa Jal maximizes a good in something. Mm. So food, I have one meal, you have one meal. But I'm full, you're not. Why? Because my one is, has, has blessings in Baraka. it. Has barakah in it. Mm. Uh, we both have the same business. Right, but my one becomes more successful. Why? Because of the niyyah, because of the bl the blessing. Mm. So that's uh, number one. Sins. And the most important one is is leaving sins. Mm. You will find that when someone does good deeds and puts his trust in Allah, he becomes more successful, mm. more blessings. And when someone is doing uh, sins and disobeying Allah, he's he's harming what he has. He's burning and destroying what he has. Subhanallah. I wanted to mention some misconceptions uh, about uh, around the topic of productivity. So these are things that people think is productivity, but it's actually not. It could okay. be harmful even. Um, number one is, don't do everything. Mm. Some people think, I do so much, I'm so productive. That's not productivity. Productivity is not uh, burning yourself out, exhausting yourself out. It's not even about doing too much. It's about selecting what is beneficial. Mm. Not doing uh, everything. Um, and you need to kind of, Choose what you're good, f good at uh, and, and not try to be someone you're not and try to be uh, so many different people in, in one. Number two um, is don't say yes to every single thing. You know, alhamdulillah, um, you have a plan. You need to focus. You need to follow that plan. The only time when you're allowed to divert slightly from that plan is when you become a comedian, mm. right? When a good opportunity comes. So you're following this path. On the way, something better came, mm. okay? You go to it, that's fine. But anything that is going to pull you back or it's not going to add any benefit, it's not actually an opportunity, uh, you need to learn how to say no. And this is difficult, yes. right? You, because sometimes we desire. Naturally, we desire to do a lot. What's that saying? It says, may Allah have mercy upon uh, one who knows his limits. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Sometimes we jump out of our lane. Yes. You know, we want to be a thinker and you want to be a politician and you want to be a sheikh and you want to be, and you know, you need to stay in your lane. Stay mm. in. This is what Allah blessed me with. This is what I'm good at. Someone else is good at something else. I'll support him in it, but I can't be that person. But how does that contradict us being visionaries and, and aiming high and, and, and I want to be a, a scholar. I want to be a writer. I want to be. I want to. Want to. Want to. Want to. Right? How, how do How do we balance the two? We balance it by remembering that uh, do you want to be a jack or do you want to be a master. Mm. Okay. So you're either a jack of all trades and master of none, or you're a master of some. Right. You're a master of some speci specialities, 
and you're not a jack of anything, mm. right? That doesn't mean, as they say in, uh, in Arabic, yeah, that there's no harm of having ilm, shay'un min al ilm, right? Some knowledge on everything. You yes. know, th that you're a person who's got general knowledge. That's, that's a very good quality, yes. you know. But specialized in one. But specialized in one. You're not a scientist, but you have general knowledge of science. You're not, in, uh, you're not a specialist in geography and history, but you have general knowledge of what's important, what's the most important. Yes. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ used that's to make a dua. Saying. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilmun nafi'a. No. Wa na'udu bika min ilmun la yanfa'a. I ask you, Ya Allah, of knowledge that is beneficial. beneficial. What does that mean? That not every single knowledge is important. Okay, we can't have knowledge of everything. That's only Allah Azza wa Jal who, who has knowledge over everything. Mm. Then you say, I seek refuge in, in knowledge that is not beneficial. Okay, you can study something that's it's not beneficial. You don't need it. Okay, um, and you're just wasting your time. You know, mm. you can't read every single book in the world. You can't specialize in every every subject. Go going back to the hadith we mentioned in the first episode in this topic. I'melu, i'melu. Mm. Lima khuliqala. Do the actions, everyone will be guided to what they're good at. Yeah. And I want to mention an example of Khalid ibn Walid and ibn Mas'ud or mm. ibn Abbas. Khalid was brave, courageous. He was a warrior. He liberated Sham. He liberated yani, many lands for Islam. Okay? But he was not. He was not a scholar. Mm. In fact, if he was a scholar, it would be a problem. Once he gave a fatwa or made a, a, a decision on something, he took a decision on something that involved fiqh. Fiqh means deep understanding of something. That's not his thing, right? He's, he's good at, you know, fighting and so on. So he made a decision and it was wrong. The Prophet ﷺ said it was wrong. Hmm. And he said, oh Allah, I am bari, I am innocent of what Khalid did. Hmm. Once he came to lead salah and he, he did a few uh, or he forgot certain verses, okay? Then after he finishing the salah, he said, SubhanAllah, the, the j jihad fighting for the sake of Allah, it brought me away or distracted me from the worship, from the kalam of Allah, from the book of Allah. Mm. He's got an excuse, so we don't, yeah. that we're away from, from the Quran. Let's go to uh, some of the younger Sahaba. Let's go to Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud. One of them saw the Prophet salam being mocked. In front of him, and the Prophet praying in front of the Kaaba at that time, the time of weakness in Mecca, Quraysh were in charge. He was praying and prostrating, and some of the Quraysh just to have a laugh, they got the dirt and the intestines of the camel, and they put it on top of the Prophet. Uh, they put it on his back mm. and in, on in his shoulder just to have a laugh. Yeah, he said, "Radiyallahu an, I saw that in front of me, and I couldn't do anything. I was." Mm too weak. I didn't have the courage to do something. Whereas uh, Fatima, she was young, young girl. She was like a lioness. She came to defend her, her father. She, she came to even fight, you know, Quraysh. She was just a little, little uh, young girl then. Yeah. My point here is Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, they're scholars, they're fuqaha. They're so knowledgeable in tafsir and fiqh and fara'id. Uh, in terms of fatwa, they're great. But in terms of fighting, they weren't the people in, in the front line, mm. okay? And likewise with Khalid ibn Walid. So what, what I mean is, uh, you know, to answer your question is, you need to specialize in what you're good at, what Allah gave you, recognize these blessings, and use it for your ibadah. Use mm. it for ibadah. And other people will be good at, at something else, and we, we complete each other. Mm. You know, this is our role, that we are an ummah. We are one body, like the Prophet ﷺ said. One of us is going to be the arm. Another one is going to be the brain. Another person is going to be the eyes. Each one is different, has different roles, but we all function together as one, as one, and we all serve one, which is the one one ummah. Now. Subhanallah. Zakumullah khair for this uh, complete and uh, full uh, round trip of understanding visionary and what it means to be a visionary Muslim. I'll leave you with the last minute uh, to conclude. Uh, inshallah, any final remarks, uh, any advice or tips uh, to all the viewers who are tuning in and listening into us? Mm. You know, the floor is yours for. So I will end with saying that you are a human being. You're not a robot. A robot is programmed, engineered to do something. But a human has feelings. He has emotions. He gets tired. He gets sick. He gets motivated one day. 
he goes up and he goes down. This is us. So realize that you're a human, you're not a robot. Aim to do uh, the best that you can, but it's not, Im it's not possible. In theory, it's not possible to do every single thing that you plan. Uh, we plan for the sake of gaining so many results. However, the results is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we put our trust with Him and uh, know that there will be you know, hiccups on the way and that's fine and we're because not we're designed be, like that. And we're not going to be really asked about the results anyways. Right? Absolutely, we're going to be asked yes. what we put forward. And these, these hiccups, you can say that they're tests from Allah so mm. we can get more rewards. You know, we're tested so we can purify ourselves more. Nothing comes easy. إنما العسر يسرع Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh Omar. And dear viewers, there you have it. Uh, we learned the characteristics, how to uh, practically implement these characteristics and tools. And we also have mentioned some uh, misconception as well as some hiccups and uh, hurdles that we might face while becoming visionaries. Uh, in, uh, firstly, to benefit ourselves, our family, our community, and the ummah at large. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us what we have uh, been taught. Mm -hmm. uh, Shaykh Omar, jazakumullah khairan for mm -hmm. your time once again. And we really enjoy your presence with us here. Alhamdulillah. Uh, jazakumullah khairan for coming out and uh, spending some time with us and benefiting us all uh, with your presence. Jazakumullah khair for, for the opportunity. Uh, I also love your company. Alhamdulillah, this is the blessing of Islam and our brotherhood. Alhamdulillah. 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 Dear viewers, uh, Tune in on, on until next time uh, until as we continue the journey of learning the qualities of a successful Muslim. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> قلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا